In this video, we're going to introduce permissions in Django REST framework, and we're going to see how we can create these permissions and tie them to the generic view classes that we've been looking at in the last few videos. So what we're going to do is address this issue that we have here, and we saw this in the last video, where if we're getting a user's orders, but there's no user that's actually authenticated in the application, then we're going to get this error here, and it's a type error at the user orders endpoint. So just to understand why this is happening, if we go back to the view that we wrote in the last video, we're overriding the get query set method on the subclass of list API view. We are getting the parent query set here and then we're doing some filtering and it's this line of code here where the problem arises because self.request.user, that's not going to refer to an authenticated user if there is not an authenticated user sending that request. Therefore, this is not gonna work. So what we need to do is we need to tell Django REST Framework that this view is only accessible if you're authenticated in the application. And that would make sense if a user who's logged into a service wants to view their orders, well, they need to be authenticated so that they can be identified. Now Django REST Framework comes with some utilities for adding permissions. So together with authentication and throttling, permissions determine whether a request should be granted or denied access. So of course, not all requests that come into your API should be served as a response. You don't always want to do that. Sometimes you're going to say, this request is not permitted. And that's what we want to do here with the permissions. Now permission checks, they are run at the start of the view and that's before any other code is allowed to proceed. And what permission checks are gonna do typically is use authentication information in the request.user and request.auth properties. And the permissions will use that information to determine if the incoming request should be permitted or not. And you can use this to grant or deny access for different types of users to different parts of your API that you're building with Django REST Framework. Now the simplest type of permission, as it says here, would be to allow access to any authenticated user. And that's what we want to do here. If a user is authenticated, then they should have the ability to view their orders. So what we want to do here is give them access. And we can do that with this permission class in Django REST Framework. It's called is authenticated. Now, as well as is authenticated, there are other permissions and a slightly less strict style of permission would be to allow full access to authenticated users, but only allow read only access to unauthenticated users. So basically, if you're logged in, you can do anything on the API, but if you're not logged in, you can only perform read only actions, such as getting an object or getting a list of objects, but you can't actually change the data in the database behind the scenes unless you're authenticated. For that functionality, you can use is authenticated or read only. That's another permission class in Django REST framework. So how do we determine the permissions on a view? All we need to do is add a permission classes attribute to the user order list API view. So I'm gonna do that just now. We're gonna set permission classes. This is just another attribute that REST framework is going to understand, just like the query set and serializer class attributes. Now permission classes, you can actually have multiple of these. So you can represent this with a Python list. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the permission is authenticated. So let's go to the API reference and is authenticated as it says, it's gonna deny permission to any unauthenticated user, but it will allow the request response if the user is authenticated. So in order to use this, I'm gonna scroll back up here and we're going to import some permissions here. So we're importing the is authenticated permission. So I'm gonna copy this and let's paste that at the top of the views.py file from REST Framework's permissions module. That's where you're gonna find these permission classes such as is authenticated. And now if we go back down to the user list view, and this is the one that requires the user to be authenticated to get their orders. We can require that authentication by adding is authenticated as the permission class. Now, what's gonna happen if we go back to this page here and we refresh the page, this is the user orders endpoint. When we refresh that, this time we're getting a different page here on the browsable API. We're getting a detailed response here and it's telling us that authentication credentials were not provided. So now we're getting that message and the clients are gonna know that they need to be authenticated in order to access this endpoint. Now we're gonna see more permissions later in the course and we're also going to create our own custom permission classes centered around different types of users. Now I want to move on to something before we finish this video that we've not covered so far and that's testing the API. So when we have functionality like this, for example, an endpoint that should only be available to authenticated users, you could add tests to make sure that the process works as expected. Now we don't need to test the raw is authenticated class here, but what we do need to test is that we get the expected behavior when we send a request that's gonna be passed to this view in Django. 
So what we're going to do now is go to tests.py, which is part of the startup code. And we're going to add a test here. And what I'm going to do is just use the Django test case in this video. And we're going to create a test class called user order test case. And that's going to inherit from test case from Django. And you can see that's automatically imported at the top. And I'm going to define a test setup method here. And that method is going to perform some setup operations. Now I'm just going to paste these in and we're going to go back to this. So let me paste these in and we need to import some of these models at the top. So I'm going to do that just now. So at the top from api.models, we're going to import the order and user models. And then we're going to issue some statements here to create two users in the application. And these just have the username of user one and user two. And then we're going to create four orders here. And the first two orders will be tied to user one. The second two are going to be tied to user two. And we want to test that when user one goes to this endpoint, they get the correct orders. In other words, they get the orders that are associated with them, but not user two. And we're going to test vice versa as well. So that's our setup method. And I'm going to minimize the sidebar here. We're now going to write the actual test function. So we're going to write a couple of these and I'm going to start with a test function here. And in fact, I'm not going to type this out. It's very common when you have test functions to have very verbose function names. So let me paste this in here and then let me try and read this. Test user order endpoint retrieves only the authenticated user's orders. That's a mouthful. That's quite a name for a function in Python, but it tells you exactly what's going on here. Basically, when a user sends a request to this endpoint, we want to make sure they only get back the orders that are actually attached to that user. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the user with the username of user1 here. So let me do that just now, and we're going to create an ORM query for that. So user.objects.get, and we're going to get the username of user1. That's going to give us back a user object that we can then work with. And we're going to log in with that user using the Django test client. Now Django test cases, they add a self.client property to the test, or I should say to the test class here. So we can access that client using self.client, as you can see here. And that client can then perform requests to your Django application. We're going to send a request here. It's not a GET request, actually. It's going to be the force login request. And we're going to pass the user to that. And what that's going to do is basically authenticate this user that we have here. And then we can actually test sending requests to the endpoint that will pass the call to this view here. So let me go back to urls.py. What we're going to do is look at the user orders endpoint. So what I'm going to do is add a name to this URL here so that we can reference it with the Django reverse function. Let's call this user orders. And we're going to go back to tests.py and I'm going to go to the top here and we're going to import the reverse function from Django. So we've imported that now and we can use that here to get the correct URL. So let's create a variable called response and we're going to use the client here. So we're going to send a get request to that API. So we're going to reverse the user orders endpoint and I need to paste the right thing in here, user-orders. So the reverse function is going to give us the URL that we're going to use in the application for the user orders. And we're going to send a get request to that URL. So the API is going to return the user's orders here. And that's going to be in this response. Now, one thing I want to do is just assert that response.status code is equal to 200 here. And once we've asserted that we've got that status of 200, we can create some data here by converting the response from JSON data to Python objects. And that's gonna give us back a list of dictionaries, I believe, containing a dictionary for each of the user's orders. That's what we expect to see here. And what I'm gonna do is just print this data out just now. And then we can test running this test here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the terminal. Again, let's minimize the sidebar. And what I'm gonna do is stop the Django development server. And we're gonna run python manage.py test. Let's see what this prints out here when we run the tests. And we've got an unexpected argument. I think I've added the wrong argument to these orders. We don't need a total amount, so I'm just gonna remove that from all of the orders. So I've now removed that total amount. That's not actually a field on the order class, on the order model. Once we've done that, we can go back to the terminal and rerun test, and let's see what we get this time. Hopefully there's gonna be no more issues. So we get back this here and we can see the different orders that are attached to the user that's logged in, in other words, to user one. And the important point is that the user ID for each of these orders, you can see it's number one here. And if we look at the second order, it's also number one. So if we were to authenticate with user two, we would expect to see that the user ID would be two in that case. So I'm gonna run the test suite again after changing that to user two. And this time you can see the user ID here 
It's now set to two because we changed the user that's actually logged in. So the functionality is working as expected. When we send a request to the user orders endpoint, we're getting back only the orders that are associated with the user that we've logged in here on line 16 and on line 17. So the last thing I want to do in this test function is just make an assertion that the user ID in each one of the orders that we get back from the API is equal to the ID of the user that we logged in. So I'm going to remove the print statement here and we can add another assertion here using the assert true function this time on the Django test case. And what we're going to assert here is that for each order in the data, and it might make more sense if I change this to orders, we're going to loop over each one of these and we're going to make sure that user ID is correct. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the all function. That's a built-in in Python. And what you pass to that is an iterable. And the all function is going to return true if the Boolean value of each value in the iterable is equal to true. So all of the values in the iterable that we're going to pass in here must evaluate to true in order for the all function to evaluate to true. So let's make sense of that by writing the statement. So we're going to take each order and we're going to get the user from that. And we're going to make sure that that user is equal to the user.id property. And that's going to be for each order in the orders that we get on line 21 as a response to the API request. So let me just quickly walk through this one more time. What we're doing here is we're taking each order in the response data that we're getting back from the API. And for each order, we're looking at the user property of that order and making sure that it's equal to the user ID that we have on line 16. So remember, we pulled out this user and that's got an ID property. And that's the ID we expect for all orders because we are logging in with this user. Therefore, when we send a request to the user orders endpoint, we expect every single order we get back to have that user ID and be associated with that user. So this is a test for that functionality. And that's quite important because imagine you have a user logging in and he sees some other user's orders. That's not going to be an optimal scenario for your web application. So this is a test for that. And for every single order in these orders that we have here, we're evaluating this Boolean condition. And for this assert true to pass, every single one of these need to be true because we're using the all function in the Python standard library. Now let me test this one more time. We're going to go back to the terminal and let me run the test command. And what we're going to see here, hopefully, is that the test passes. And we get that test passing, as you can see at the bottom. So all is good there. Our functionality is working as expected. We log in a user and we send a request to this endpoint and we only get back orders that are attached to that user. Now I want to add one more test here to make sure that an unauthenticated user gets the right response here, a 403 forbidden response. So that's just in case some other developer comes along and removes the permission classes by accident. That test is going to pick that problem up and it's going to fail if we add this test here. So I'm going to go back to tests.py and we'll write another function for that in a second. But let's go back to the documentation for REST framework now. And what I'm going to do on this permissions page is look at this section on how permissions are determined. So if any permission check fails, a permission denied or not authenticated exception will be raised and the main body of your view is not going to run. And this is the part I want to check below here. When a permission check fails, we will either get a 403 forbidden or a 401 unauthorized response. And there are some rules for that, but if a request was successfully authenticated, but the permission was denied, you're going to get a 403 forbidden response. On the other hand, if the request was not successfully authenticated and the highest priority authentication class does not use this header here, then you're also going to get a 403 forbidden response, but you'll get a 401 unauthorized response if the request was not successfully authenticated and the highest priority authentication class does use those headers. Now, basically what we are going to expect here, as you can see from the browsable API, is a 403 forbidden response if we have an unauthenticated user sending a request to this endpoint. So what we're going to do is go back to our test functions and I'm going to write a new function here. So I'm going to paste a name in here to this function. So I'm just going to call this test user order list unauthenticated. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to try and send a request to the user orders endpoint without authenticating and logging in a user. So let me paste this code in here to get the response from the user orders endpoint by sending that get request to the endpoint. Now, when we have the response, what I want to do here is assert equal, and we're going to assert that the response.status code, and that's a property on the response object in Django REST framework, we want to check that that status code is equal to 403. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to the terminal here and let's run the test and see if this works. 
So on the test suite we had one test before, we've now got two tests and you can see they are both passing. Now if we were to change this to something else, for example, let's say 401 here, if we rerun the tests at the bottom, we're going to see now that we get a failure because the response status code is not equal to what's expected there. So when you have the is authenticated permission and you want to make sure that that endpoint remains blocked off for unauthenticated users, you can add a small test like this to make sure that's the case. Now there's a couple of optimizations or small changes I should say that I want to make here. So at the top I'm going to import something from REST Framework and that's the status module. So from REST Framework let's import status. And this module here is going to provide HTTP status codes for code readability. So what you can do here is instead of just putting a number here, like a magic number such as 403 or 200, what we can do is we can use the status module and we can use these more idiomatic ways to reference the actual response code, such as this one here, HTTP 403 forbidden. Now that's going to have the same effect as just putting the number 403, but it's much more readable because it's not just some magic number that you've planted into your code. It's actually, I think this is referencing an enum value. I could be wrong about that. It's some kind of constant, but it's much more readable. That's the most important thing. And we can also do that for the 200 response that we have up here. So I'm going to change that to status dot http 200 ok so this is just improving the readability of your code it makes your tests much more readable and maintainable we can clear the terminal and we're just going to double check that everything is still working by running the test suite and you can see we get back that two tests have successfully passed so everything is still working but we've now just used the status module in rest framework to make the code a bit more readable now one thing I want to do just to finish the video is start up the Django development server and we're going to go back to our API for the user order page. When we refresh this, again we're getting back this message that authentication details or credentials are not provided. What I want to do is actually log in to the Django admin and just make sure that when we go back to this page with an authenticated user, we get the results we expect on the browsable API. So I'm going to log in as that John Doe guy that we created recently. And let me try and remember the password here. Once we're logged in, we can just go back to the user dash orders endpoint. So when we go back there, we get back the orders attached to John Doe, who has the user ID of two. And remember from previous videos, this serializer has the default representation of a foreign key. It's using the primary key related field. And that gives you back the primary key of the user. And imagine you had a user's endpoint. You can then take the response here and get the user ID and then send a next request to the user's endpoint if you needed more information. So sometimes you don't want the nested data and instead you're going to want just a reference to the other entity and you might or might not send that next request to get that extra user information. That depends on what your application needs to actually achieve. But that's a separate point from this video. It's just to touch upon the fact that sometimes returning the primary keys is actually a good idea because it makes your responses a lot smaller than returning nested data that your client might not need. Now the important point for this video is that we've now added the is authenticated permission to the user order endpoint. And that means that any users that are unauthenticated cannot access this endpoint and they're not going to get the exception, but instead they're going to get the message that they need that they need to provide authentication credentials. Otherwise, authenticated users, they can continue using this endpoint as they did before and that's all going to work fine. So that's all for this video. We've covered a little bit about permissions in Django REST Framework. We're going to see more of that later in the series. In the next video, we're going to look at the Django REST Framework API view class. And this can be used to create API endpoints and views that don't necessarily correlate to a model or a query set of models in Django. So we're going to look at that in the next video. But thanks again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we have in the description. Thanks very much to everyone who's donated to this. It's much appreciated and it's going to help keep as much content free on YouTube as possible. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.